Hey all, Taves here, back playing some more Planet Zoo. So this is a start of a, a, a little mini-series um, that I'm going to be running alongside the existing stuff, so I'm not abandoning my, abandoning my tropi tropical dome, but this is a yeah, mini-series called Zoo Focus, which is basically going to highlight, it's going to look at specific things in specific zoos. So I'll probably recreate specific parts of zoos. Um, from all over the world, just kind of inspirational things and, and bits that I've kind of got uh, have got some meaning to me or to to, to the, the zoo community. So this one um, particularly kind of pertinent to me as it's a uh, you know the, the largest zoo in the UK, actually one of the largest uh, zoos in Europe, I would say. Um, Chester Zoo and Chester Zoo uh, last week, I believe, or the week before. Um, made a big kind of announcement of how much of a financial crisis they're in um, and unfortunately this is something that reflects the states of, of, of zoos across the world at the moment because obviously um, coronavirus has kept us all at home and yeah, that's massively massively detrimental to a zoo. Chester Zoo for example um, needs have come out saying that they need £1.6 million a month in order to financially survive. Now that is pretty incredible amount of money when you think about it. Um, and it's basically because 97% of their revenue, of their income comes from visitors, um, be that either from, from ticket sales or from um, people adopting animals or adoption packs and all those sorts of things. And obviously in this last three months, none of that has been happening. Um, Chester Zoo has 35,000 animals um, and they say on their website they've got 35,000 animals that are in this kind of threatened and endangered species categories. Um, so yeah, so actually, you know, when you come to think about it, you, know, you can't shut down a zoo. Those zoos have to feed their animals. The animals can't, can't be kind of furloughed and sent home. They still need looking after and therefore you still need your staff and you still need your feed costs and all your veterinary bills and all those sorts of things still still have to happen. So um, this is a bit of a sort of, um, yeah, a bit of a combination of things really. I thought I'd do this episode A as a kind of uh, uh, a pointer and a direction to um, Chester Zoo's fundraising exercise and I've set up a set up a, a just giving page but they've obviously got a just giving page of their own and i'll i'll direct you to um both of those in the description um so if you want to donate and obviously don't feel don't feel pressured to but if you can afford to donate um either to chester zoo or just to kind of get get more information about your local zoo and find out if you can help them or if they're in in trouble um so i thought what i what could do is you know i've been actually um I've been planning to visit Chester Zoo for a while because I've never actually been. I've been to London Zoo. London Zoo is closer to where I live in the south. Um, but I have actually got t um, tickets. Actually, funny enough, when I started playing Planet Zoo, um, I was given some tickets for Chester Zoo. So, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to go since it's been shut. Uh, so what I thought I'd do is just kind of do what I could do. <laughs> the, 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 the smallest kind of contribution I could do was... was um, mess around and recreate the entrance of Chester Zoo. I had always this idea in the back of my head that I would create Chester Zoo at, and then visit Chester Zoo. So, uh, and that was before the kind of the epidemic and all those sorts of things started happening. So I'm hoping that that will still be the case. Um, the government, the UK government has in the last few days announced that Chester Zoo will be able to open up and all, all zoos within the UK will be able to open, I think, by the 15th of this month, so 15th of June. Um, but you can sort of assume that, that you know, it's a 128-acre site, so um, you can sort of assume that it, they will make some money out of being open, but until the overall economy opens up and people are able to travel... Um, because, for example, people from the south, you know, Chester's not that far away, but it's quite a lot more of a an ask to say that someone would go to the zoo on a day with a sort of a, a four-hour road trip to get there. Um, and because you can't stay in a local hotel or an Airbnb or something, then, um, yeah, I can imagine they'll still have some problems with their ticket sales. 
Um, so I will be, uh, basically I will be anyone who donates on um, my Just Giving page. So I've set up a Just Giving page and that goes, um, all the money from that goes directly to Chester Zoo. Um, I never s sort of see it, but um, anyone who donates on that page specifically, um, I'll probably just like, you know, name a, an animal after you or something or do something in um, in a future park. Maybe I'll carry on playing this Chester Zoo build um so yeah it's a it's an, in, an interesting one it's a um it's not an enormously yeah, obviously i'm only doing the build of the entrance here um and i think there are you know opportunities for me to do more of this so but i thought and i thought it was worth kind of interrupting the the flow of um doing the dome a for just giving myself a break from it but also just um, because it's obviously a really important and relevant time for, for zoos like Chester. Um, so yeah, doing a lot of this, and I've, and I've spent a lot of time, um, hopefully anyone who's been to Chester Zoo will recognise that this actually is pretty accurate, and I'll probably have, I think I'll probably put some photographs up of it at the end, um, so we can do a little bit of comparison, and there'll be a bit of a walk around at the end after this speed build. Um, I did actually borrow from the workshop an amazing um car park so that i didn't have to um create that as well so i'll put a link to that in the description as well because that's actually really amazing you can see like charging stations and stuff like that in the background of this but yeah a bit of a labor of love that so i just thought I'd, I'd um yeah spend some time uh being as accurate as i could be with this the, the advantage of something like chester um, in you know, in one of these kind of recreation um, efforts, is that you can like get really good street view looks of it. There's plenty of photographs. There's actually there's plans and things if you wanted to look at them. Um, so yeah, it's actually quite easy to kind of to recreate rather than use your own kind of creative um, creative interpretation of things. Obviously, you still have some of that. Um, so these are a little you know, little supposed to be like little card readers and things little ticket booths you'll have seen that i did we'll look at all of this in more detail but i did a sort of um like a blind for these using one of the curtains so you can pull down the blind to to close off that that little ticket booth um and then yeah just put in a rug and i think this is a i think this is a visitor center and an education center um i think on this side actually is a um is the gift probably the gift shop from the looks of it um but then there's an education center on the right hand side which i think is what i'm creating now so lots of just kind of yeah copy and paste in and um using the little copy round tricks stuff it's pretty quick in the speed build um yeah chester's actually quite an interesting one because they've got i think i first started there's a um a tv show that chester zoo had um, made about the documentary which is just it's just incredible and it's actually really insightful because it shows you the people behind the zoos and the keepers and how kind of how how much of it um, is kind of behind the scenes really and that you don't it's not guest facing like obviously most people I guess would know that Joe you know, um, conservation and uh, you know understanding the biology of an animal is like a massive part of of what zoos do um but yeah and so there's just a small sort of surface of it is is actually the the, the, the guest facing parts um but then to hear that they you know 97 percent of their income comes from um from the from the ticket sales it's just interesting it's the sort of thing well they i wonder how much of that money actually gets used you know for the for the kind of the, the stuff that we see behind the scenes you know the the breeding programs and all that sort of stuff this was a fun little bit actually they've got quite interesting kind of gates um i think this is a fairly new version of the entrance because there's um uh 2012 is a date it's 1952 to, to 2012 i think 1952 was the year that chester zoo was opened i believe i should have probably fact checked that um, and then I think this renovation to the entrance was done in 2012, which is where you see the dates 2012 and 1952 in the in the um, in the uh, metalwork in a second in the gates. 
so yeah just kind of coming to the end here putting some details in um it's an interesting sort of shape actually another thing you can look at if you're trying to do one of these kind of um accurate recreations is not only can you look at the street view of chester um and chester actually has an internal um you, know, you can you can actually walk around inside the zoo in in google street view which is incredible um, but being able to also look at the satellite images is really handy because you can look down top down on the shapes of buildings and those sorts of things so i used that to try and get all of the um the roof lines and stuff as close as i could uh obviously within the restrictions of the of the, the pieces so i'm making the gates now um and there's a couple of really cool little bits actually which you don't massively see in the speed build but um you'll see when i do the real time section at the end um i added some they've got some like fish and uh sort of root into the into this metal work so yeah here's the two dates 2012 and then 1952 is the next one uh yeah and so it does it sort of it i mean uh, potentially it's a, so there's my fish that <laughs> my attempt at a little fish doesn't it's not too bad uh but yeah so maybe i end up turning this into a park i think this series will be um just bits that kind of interest me um rather than doing whole big zoos i think they'll just be kind of spotlights for example this is something that took me a while to figure out so this is the roof line on top of this roof line so you see these kind of weird um almost bisected circles uh, that they have and then the roofs have got like a this is quite an, i think quite an iconic look um this sort of shaped timber structure so i sussed out that what the easiest way to do this was to get a guide was to use um curved barrier tops so i'm just putting this glass barrier in as like a guide and then you'll see i've put lots of planks down i've kind of randomized the color of those planks and then this starts to go a bit speedy in a second so i won't be going for all of this but just sort of following the curve now so dragging up each one of these posts following the curve to give it kind of a a former of this of this shape um, and I think when you see it at the end, it works quite well. Um, and obviously, and what's quite cool is I noticed that on some of the pictures uh, that were originally when they put this timber work up, it was all nice and sort of golden wood coloured. And then it's, it's aged over time to this lovely kind of silvered colour. So now we're making the actual um, the zoo signs. This is quite a recognisable um yeah if you know chester you'll you and if you don't know any of the buildings you probably know this logo um and this took me a little bit of figuring out how to get it and it's not quite perfect uh and we do a bit of a jump ahead in a second but uh getting the logo right it's actually like a handwritten font so it's quite quite difficult to match um i borrowed one of the workshop fonts there and had to adapt it uh, so yeah, just making the shape of the of the logo and stuff. So we will we'll be back very shortly where I'll talk to you through some of the specifics and show you some of the specifics uh, in the real time section. So back in a second, guys. Okay, welcome back. So yeah, it's going to be a little short, just a little short uh, wander around. As I said, there's not loads to see. It's more of a this is more of a detail effort than a, a than a big full project. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully I've got it reasonably okay. I think some of the things I've had to kind of this um, flooring's not quite right, and obviously all the car park I've just you know nick one from the workshop but i think most of this is all right um i looked up actually between recording the that last section and, and recording this section what the significance of these two dates are and i cannot find out what the what the significance is um 1931 is actually the year the zoo opened um so it may well just be that this was um 
something to do with or maybe the date was even just the the date that the pictures were taken i don't know that i, that I captured but if anyone knows um do let me know in the comments so here's our little you know basic queuing system we've got so we've got a little little viewing a uh, little yeah you know, windows out for the for the, the ticket ticket peeps to, to administer and uh, yeah, it's obviously it's none of it's none of it's made inside it's all just kind of hidden inside and these are quite yeah you know, if you've been to Chester you'll recognize these these kind of iconic uh, uh what would you call these profiles i guess of some of the animals that you're going to see inside and then this is the you know, membership and adoption so i think this is guest services and education over this side so yeah as i said guys if you can um then it would be massively appreciated uh if you could you know if you can help out in any way um even if it's not with chester if it's with your local zoo you know lots of zoos are in real crisis at the moment um chester specifically you know it's chester's chesterzoo.org slash support hyphen us um, that's their page I'll put that um, down below but also make sure that my just, uh, just giving and uh, their just giving pages are down there and hopefully we'll be able to do more I'd love to be able to do more of this series and um, develop the zoo and show some real pictures and stuff of, of this this awesome place I'd say it's not the most dramatic of entrances um, but I know what lies behind it is, is pretty amazing filled with amazing people so yeah that's all from me guys um, normal service will be resumed next week back on the dome and yeah I shall catch you guys on the next one take it easy